there's something unusual going on in the small Serbian town of Kostalac, located on the banks of the River Danube. The research ships Argos and Istros had a quick stop off here and are now heading for the delta. On board, 34 scientists. They've been taking samples from Europe's second largest river since their start in Regensburg, the first measurement campaign under the project name Solutions. A typical environmental sample contains at least 10,000 different chemicals, maybe more. So, and not all of them pose a risk, of course. But to find out which of these chemicals are the bad guys. That's one of the major issues, one of the major problems we have to solve. The next step is of course then how to monitor these bad guys in the environment and uh, the tools we have at the moment are not sufficient for that and the solutions hopefully will provide exactly these tools. But that's still not enough. It's called solutions and a solution is only a solution if we actually uh, at least suggest abatement options at the end. How can we solve the problem? How can we reduce this kind of pollution? And that's exactly what we tried to do. Specialists from all the states bordering the river are taking part in the expedition, scheduled to last several weeks. Daily, the interdisciplinary team investigates the water quality. Today, we will go to the shoreline and take samples of the river bottom. We will take the small animals we find there and we will analyze them later and depending on the composition of species we find there, we will we will, we will get an idea of the quality of the river and the circumstances of the river. The boats are lowered as soon as the ships stop off along the route. The researchers then have four hours to investigate the riverbed and banks and to collect and document specimens from the indigenous plant and animal worlds. We found some red coronomids. It is, a, it is lava of, of, of small midges and they have reddish, reddish body because they have, they have red blood type which, which enables them to, to survive under poor oxygen conditions. Okay. But they are, they are animals of standing waters as well. Determining the quality in, on and around the water is fairly painstaking. Laborious too, every day, whatever the weather, unremittingly. Although international, it doesn't take long for the team to get up and running. Everyone knows their task. So it is really a matter of, of specialist knowledge to identify those, those animals that, that will tell you something. And this is not, not easily done in the field here because the most, obvious, the most obvious animals would live virtually anywhere. The International Commission for the Protection of the Danube is an important partner in the 40 organizations involved in solutions. This is already its third joint Danube survey and several work groups are deployed, including a Hungarian-Serbian team that tirelessly dredges sediment samples from the middle of the river and then transports them to the ship laboratory. Arriving there, the sludge is immediately processed and once preserved, sent to home laboratories for subsequent chemical and biological analysis. The Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research at Leipzig isn't just the overall coordinator within solutions. It has also deployed a new invention on board, a sampling device for the in-situ extraction of 500 litres of water. The water is then pumped into a specially developed continuous centrifuge where the filter system installed there separates the suspended particulates and bonds them with the polymers. Once full, the solid phase extraction cartridge is replaced, labelled according to river section and then tucked safely away until the next mail boat visits the ship. Later on, the aquatic research scientists use these extracts to acquire their chemical and ecotoxicological data a pioneering system that saves the laborious process of transporting massive water containers back to Germany. After this, this is stored in an isolation box and we send it back to Leipzig. And in Leipzig, uh, we take out, uh, we extract uh, the compounds from these polymers. Bella Czarny, the Hungarian research director, is always good for a spot of onboard banter. 
but the scientists, from chemists to microbiologists, don't have much time to take in the sights as the Danube winds its way through Serbia and Romania. A flying visit with the fish specialists. How did you catch them? I zapped them with direct current. And what are you going to do next? Now we'll take them down to the next site. Can we follow you? Sure. The fish specimens are identified by species and characteristics, and then released back into the Danube once the electric shock has worn off. Only a few specimens of so-called target fish, bleaks and round gobies, end up on the open-air operations deck. The former are found in the surface waters of the Danube, the latter an invasive species on the riverbed. I uh, collect blood samples for uh, um, the micronucleus assay for, um, to analyze it to, uh, with the help of a microscope and we can see DNA damages. Um, liver is a very important tissue because it's a, it's a tissue where the metabolic of um, from body foreign uh, substances uh, accuse and um, we do three different tests with it for gene expression um, as well as um, liver enzyme activity and also the pathology and we collect um, muscle tissue for uh, chemical analysis. Naturally, these analyses can only be performed in the laboratories of the home institutes. The expedition corps arrives at the entrance to the Iron Gate. This is where the Danube breaks through the southern Carpathians, creating an oddly shaped valley of gorges stretching along 134 kilometers. Scientific research continues here, of course, outside and in. The microbiologists and the algae specialists are at work in the lower deck laboratory seeking out indications of toxic emissions in the bacteria gathered and the phytoplankton sampled from the Europe's largest freshwater reservoir. In terms of the algae, I think it's fair to say that even in the last Joint Danube survey six years ago, the phytoplankton indicated a relatively good water quality. And this time, there's no doubt at all. The Danube is the first of Europe's watercourses to be studied as part of solutions. Summing up the management so far as the project drifts back through the Iron Gate. I have to emphasize that the Danube is the most international river in the world. It's 19 countries sharing the Danube River Basin. There are 14 countries uh, cooperating under the ICPDR and this is really extremely international and on top of this there is also a big variety of the socio-economical conditions within the countries. If you look at the GDP of the Danube countries, uh, there is a difference of, let's say, a magnitude. And uh, to cooperate for the improving of water quality on such a transnational scale, in such a variable conditions, that's really unique. And if you take all this uh, package of results, and you will transform it into the legislation, into the really implementation, then it would uh, get uh, or become beneficial for all. And this is important. The scientists involved continue their work back home. This is where the actual analysis starts. In Leipzig too, in the Department of Effect Directed Analysis at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research. This is our Sputnik, our sampler. It's just back from the Joint Danube Survey in Belgrade. This segment is now put in the freezer for freeze drying. We use the device, a, a relatively simple device, to, to dry the sample here, without the risk of the sample being changed in any way. 
diese Probe getrocknet werden kann. The chemical substances attached to millions of small plastic balls are released again with methanol after removal of the water. The solution is then placed in a liquid chromatograph. The environmental chemist can then use mass spectrometry to identify with greater precision any potentially harmful substances contained. Has analysis of the initial samples revealed any pollution? So what we uh, found are some of the uh, well-known micropollutants, like for example atrazine, uh, which is a herbicide which is not used in the European Union for a couple of years now. We also found, for example, uh, diclofenac, which is a pharmaceutical, and we found caffeine, which is uh, obviously known from the daily uh, to most of the people from the daily uh, consume, consume of coffee. More rigorous research will be needed to determine whether there are any new currently unknown emerging pollutants in the Danube samples and everyone involved is eagerly anticipating the results. Initial findings are scheduled for publication in spring 2014. Following on from the successful solutions and joint Danube Survey 3 alliance, the kickoff meeting is held in the Centre for Environmental Research. The political dimension of the enterprise soon becomes apparent. To tackle emerging pollutants is, is one of the major issues for drinking water suppliers at the moment as well as for the wastewater operators. Um, since the frame for the quality of drinking water and wastewater is set by the European Commission. But there are, there's a huge list of substances, a huge list of emerging pollutants which enter the water cycle and which, um, yeah, which cause further treatment and, uh, and uh, further um, investigations for the water services. So we really have, we really have high, high expectations to the, to the outcome and to the deliverables of, of the solution project. Solutions will proceed to the Rhine and the Ebro once analysis of the Danube data is complete, seeking a comparison with the Danube from the perspective of environmental sciences.